Once you've created the table in the Oracle database, probably the first thing you'll want to do is populate it with some sample data. And that can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. Let's look at an example. First of all, I'll drop a table MIMP if it already exists. And if you're not familiar with that syntax, that's a new thing coming in 23C. I'll link to another video somewhere up here showing that details. And then I've created my table called MIMP with a couple of columns. How do I populate that table with data? Well, this is historically what I've had to do. First, I write my first insert statement, and then I write my second insert statement. And then I go ahead and I put my third insert statement and my fourth insert statement, and so on. I write a single insert statement for each individual row that I want to put in there. Now, that's not a big deal, but if, for example, this database is across a very slow network or I've got some latency issues, then five inserts, all one after the other, if I'm doing this in an automated fashion, could take a fair while to run, especially if it's more than five, it could be 5,000 inserts. Let me roll that back. And one of the things we've done in the past to perhaps uh, improve the performance when it comes to high latency environments is we would put the entire thing into an anonymous block. In that way, rather than sending five inserts across the line, I'm sending a single PL SQL block across the line to run my inserts just in a single trip to the database. And that's quite effective and uses a bit of PL SQL. In fact, I've got a blog post somewhere which talks about how we can automate this process. It converts your inserts into PL SQL blocks. Um, have a look on my blog post for details on that. In 23C, however, there is a easier and simpler way. I'll roll back that insert and let's now use 23C to do it. We have this thing called the values constructor. I'm sure you're familiar with insert values. We've now extended the concept of values to become a constructor function. So I can type in values here, but then I can do a series of rows in the one values constructor. So in this case, I'm doing a single insert statement, but I'm doing a values of multiple rows. We do one trip to the database, one single insert command, but I've inserted five rows in that one insert. What if it's not an insert command I'm trying to do? What if I want to just create or synthesize, say, five rows of data to use, for example, in a select statement? Well, in the past, that's been a fairly lengthy exercise to do. I write select my values from dual, and then to get the next row, I do union all, and then I do select the next value from dual, and I continue on. And so to get five rows, I'm writing five select statements from dual. Now you've probably seen in 23C, I've spoken about this in previous videos, that the from dual is going to be optional in 23C. So I can do this a little bit more efficiently by simply removing the from dual. I can repeat my query here, my select one, two, three, four, etc., without using from dual, but I still have five select statements and five union alls. But the values constructor, which I mentioned as a tool for inserting multiple rows, has now been made a standalone function. It's not necessarily part of an insert statement. So I can do select star from a values constructor now as well. So using the values constructor, I can simply type in my five rows as tuples, and I can simply select from that. Now, to select from anything, I need to know effectively what the name of the table would be if I wanted to refer to it in an inline view, and obviously the columns. So with the values constructor, I need to then add them at the end of the select statement. So in this case, I'm doing a select star from these five values, but I'll refer to it as the emp table with the following columns, emp no and ename. If that seems a little bit counterintuitive, as in having the table and column names at the end of the query, what you can do is flip it around and use a with clause. I can do with the employee list, nominate my two columns there, emp no and ename. Unlike a normal with clause, where if you saw with clause with column names in brackets, that would normally mean a recursive with, in this case, I can simply do a with clause, nominate the table name and the columns, and then once again, type in my values constructor. That gives me my five rows. Because I've nominated the table name and the column names at the top, effectively, I now simply do select star from emp list, and that gives me the same result. So no more big, long union alls, no more lots of list of selects over and over. The values constructor can be used for a select statement as well as an insert statement.